How are we doing? Nice and dry. <laughs> oh, what's up guys, how are you doing? Thank you very much for checking out the video and welcome back to Colo Craft Bushcraft. Uh, if you're new here, my name's Alex and this channel is all about uh, my journey learning and developing bushcraft skills. So today, it's been a little while since I've been out. The last couple of videos I've been doing, I've been wandering around trying to find a bushcraft camp, uh, a spot to wild camp, particularly in my hammock, uh, and I haven't particularly been very successful. So I really wanted to get out and spend the night outdoors, so I thought, I might as well come back to my camp uh, on what is a lovely, glorious day uh, in good old England. It is very, very wet. It's supposed to rain for pretty much the entire day up until about 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, and at the moment, uh, my camera is currently under my coat. So the first thing I need to do is get my tarp up to shelter my camp a little bit. Uh, and then as you can see, there's loads of sort of uh, duff and, uh, and mud around. So I need to clean out my fire pit and generally clean up camp a bit. Uh, and then the plan is just to uh, spend the day outside relaxing. I've got a good book that a mate of mine gave to me, so I'm going to read that. Uh, I'm going to practice a few bushcraft skills. I thought I would use my um, new convex knife to see about making some decent feather sticks, which is something that if you watch previous videos, you know that I have struggled with. So uh, yeah, so I thought I'd do that, and I might even try, uh, might even try the bow drill. Um, it's going to be really difficult because everything around here is soaked. If I can find some decent dead dry. Uh, standing wood that I might give the old uh, bow drill a go. Maybe not to actually try and light a fire to get like a tinder bundle going because as I say everything is soaked so I'm not sure I'd even be able to get a decent tinder bundle. Um, but just to see if I can create an ember. Uh, but if not it doesn't really matter, I'm not bothered about it. I've got other ways to start a fire. And then yeah we'll cook up some food, got dinner in my bag um, and we're just going to relax uh, and enjoy being outside for a bit. So as I said first thing to do is get the tarp up and uh, create some shelter. Let's do it. Sorry if you see up my nose. <laughs>
She's a little damp, but that's okay. I think hearing rain on a tarp is one of my favourite things. I don't think, I know, it is one of my favourite things. Something very, very relaxing about it. I'm really, really glad it came out today. Even though it is wet and grey. It smells amazing here, I have to say. The wind, it's, uh, it's a sort of a light breeze coming through at the moment, that and the rain gives the woods such a beautiful smell. I don't know how else to describe it. It kind of smells like sort of piney and grass, even though I know there are no pine trees particularly around here, I don't think, but I don't, I don't know how else to describe it. It's, it's very woody and cleansing. be a good day. So I need to collect some firewood. Um, given how wet it is I really really need dead standing so I can get to the centre of it where it's still dry. Um, so in a minute I'm going to go on a hunt for some firewood. My, I think the main kind of plan I guess would be to get all my kind of camp chores done first which is mainly collecting firewood really. Go and get all the firewood, store it under my uh, under myself and under my little wood shelter there so that that's done and then we can muck about uh, trying to do some feather sticks and uh, even a bow drill and stuff like that. I'll do it in a minute. However, I do think that given how nice it is right now, it does warrant one of my other favourite things, which is a nice beer. I'm settled, I've arrived, tarps up, the camera's nice and safe and dry. I'm in no rush, so I do think a beer is an appropriate thing right now. That's the only slight thing that does ruin the tranquility is the planes overhead. Never mind, I guess you can't have everything, eh? <laughs> Cheers, guys. The river's really high right now as well. I'll show you in a second. Um, so it's flooded the whole bottom bit of this, uh, this bit of area where I am now, and I really, really like it when that happens. It's, um, it really kind of, I don't know, it really kind of opens up this space and makes it feel a lot more kind of like a shore environment so I can see you really far. I mean, I know there's trees and stuff blocking, I'm just saying. That's how it kind of feelings it folks. I really, really like it. One of my favorite things in the world is to sit on a Lakeshore. I keep talking about my favourite things at the moment, I don't know why. Anyway, one of my favourite things is to sit on a lakeshore and just look out, hopefully with trees and woods and stuff around, and the river rising and kind of flooding this bottom area does give me a little bit more of that kind of feeling, which I'm a big fan of. I know it's not particularly great for the grass and stuff that's down there. I mean, grass is fairly indestructible, so I don't think it makes too much difference. The big problem with it is when the river goes back down again, all the rubbish and stuff that horrible people throw in there, this all comes up onto this bit of land and the river recedes, it leaves it all. So when this all goes away again at some point, I can guarantee that there's going to be so many old plastic bottles and glass bottles and just crap left over from inconsiderate people who have no concept of preserving nature of the environment, just throwing stuff away really in really annoys me. Anyway, back to happy. Back to happy. See what I mean about how high the river is? 
Seagull often completely floods the field. Sometimes it's um, over the way there. Floods over seagulls and stuff in it at the moment. I mean, I'm assuming they're seagulls. They're gulls of some kind. Um, I love it. I love it when it does it. It almost looks like a lake. It's Oh. oh, nice and dry. remembered that the weather that we're having, the storm if you like, although it's definitely not a storm, but uh, I don't know if it's like the offshoot of, this, of the storm, but it's named after me. It's uh, Storm Alex. So uh, I think it's very appropriate that we're camping out tonight uh, when Storm Alex is, uh, is going on and ravaging the country. Ah. Oh, very cool. Very appropriate. Right, anyway, this weather is nothing like my personality by the way. I'm a bright and happy individual. I'm not dreary and grey <laughs> and rainy. Um, anyway, I think it's time that I do some work and I uh, go find some firewood. So, uh, given the weather, given the storm, Alex, I'm probably not going to take the camera with me um, because I'm, I'm going to put my coat on at the, at the moment. My camera's hiding under my coat, and uh, I'm going to put the coat on while I go and search for firewood. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to go do that, and I will be back momentarily check it out firewood collected and processed. Um, I've got a fairly decent haul here. Uh, I noticed that actually around these parts there isn't a huge amount of dead standing wood. There's loads and loads of deadfall which is fine in the summer when it's all dry um, but at the moment it's all just soaked through so it's kind of useless. So uh, I've done what I can. I've got a fairly decent haul out of it so I'm, I'm quite happy with that and that should very much see me through tonight. Um, some of these bigger pieces down the bottom here if you can see those if I get my knee out of the way. Uh, they are from the big tree that was down um, just at the bottom of the hill here where my camp is. I don't know if you guys have remembered that if you've seen if you've watched any other of my videos, uh, but it, it's this tree. Did I not warn you to wear suitable I've footwear? I've got Wellington boots up there, up here in my hand. So these are like 900 pound Wellingtons that you talked about. Are they Jack Wills? Of course they are. Are they Jack Wills? Or crew? They might be crew. No, they're not. They're probably or they're Or they barber? Or hunter? I am 100% going to swallow down that feet one. Just take it easy. Why do you think I'm filming it? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, with my mates trying to <laughs> climb under it. Uh, that one, the guy that owns the land here has actually chopped that up recently. Um, and he said that I could burn the pieces. So I've got a few of them here. There's some of the much bigger ones um, still down at the bottom there, um, which I'm not gonna be able to cut up with the little saw that I have. Um, so at some point I might bring a, a buck saw down um, or ask him to chop them up smaller for me, who knows. <laughs> um, ooh, excuse me, but yeah, very, very happy with that. You know, it's true what they say about firewood warming you three times. Once when you collect it, once when you once when you process it, and once when you burn it. Oh, I'm very very warm now, so I'm gonna have a little bit of a sit down. Uh, and then after I've done that, uh, I'm going to batten down some of the straighter pieces because they are dry on the inside, which is great. I'm gonna batten them down, and try and make some better sticks. But yeah, I'm gonna have a rest first.
you know, there's always a fair amount of downtime when you're camping. Um, like once you've done your chores and stuff, and you're just sitting relaxing in your room in one place and you're not moving around, um, you have a lot of time to yourself. Um, and one of the things that I really enjoy doing when I'm out here is, is reading a book. Um, so this is a new one that I've started. It's called um, Porn of Prophecy by David Eddings. Uh, it was actually given to me by um, a very good friend of mine um, when he came and stayed uh, at camp last time. Uh, so I'm very grateful. Thank you, Andy. Um, I'm really enjoying it so far. I've only read the prologue, but so far it's really cool. And it's, uh, it's very much my kind of thing. It's like a, it's a fantasy thing about sorcerers and wizards and gods and things like that, which is, uh, is right up my alley, as it were. So thank you very much, mate. I'm really enjoying it. Just look at the map at the start of this. Oh, going out of focus. This is so cool. Very Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I love it. Right, I've been sitting in, sit, uh, <laughs> I've been sitting around um, for a little while now, uh, just relaxing and enjoying being outside, being enjoying the smell, because I just can't get over it. It's, it's lovely. Um, Anyway, I've been getting a little bit cold, so I think it's high time we start doing stuff again. Um, so I'm going to try and make some feather sticks. I'm going to pick out the straightest, least knotty bits of dry wood that I've got. Uh, I'll split some of them down and I will uh, try and make some feather sticks. So for this, I'm going to use my bushcraft knife, which today is my real steel uh, bushcraft plus convex knife. Uh, I haven't tried feather sticking with a convex blade before, um, so I've no idea how it's going to go. Um, but it's a fairly sturdy knife. I've shown you this before in a previous video, so um, this is like another kind of test for it. Uh, I actually really like the way this feels. As I said last time, the only thing I don't like about it particularly is the sheath. Um, but, you know, if you want to see that, go and watch the, uh, the other video that I did. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to pick out some wood and uh, break it down and start attempting to feather stick again. Whoa. Fairly good pattern. It can be a decent piece for trying to feather stick. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is split these down, hopefully, without completely and utterly breaking them, uh, to try and get at the drier wood that's in the middle. That went quite well. Unlike last time when I went down to like eight, um, so I did actually make a video where I tried to make feather sticks before and failed miserably. Um, and lots of you actually gave me some really good advice on how to do it, so thank you for that. Uh, if you haven't watched that, you know, feel free to go and watch it. Um, last time, uh, as I say, I split the wood down into eights uh, rather than quarters because that's what I heard was good to do, and that didn't go brilliantly for me. So this time, I think I might try with quarters instead. As same as last time, I'm still piece, keeping the pieces fairly long, because that's what Paul Kirtley says to do, and he knows a thing or two. So we shall see. So there's a big old knot there. So maybe if I try and stay away from that, split this way, maybe it'll work. Or not, as the case may be. But it's all a learning curve, so it doesn't matter.
certainly having more success than I did last time I did this. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're still not particularly good feather sticks, but... Still significantly better than last time. Which does make me happy and makes me believe that there is still hope for me. <coughs> and if nothing else, you said, getting lots of shavings, so that's a good thing. I think the main thing I'm doing differently this time is um, I'm trying, at least, to put a lot less pressure uh, into the cup, letting the knife do the work, rather than kind of pulling it in, pushing it in. Um, it's more of a diagonal kind of motion that I'm trying to do this time. Um, and as I say, I'm trying to put a lot less pressure in. Uh, at the start, certainly, I was still... But, uh, but just then, kind of very, trying to keep it very smooth and, and not dig into the, dig into the wood and that seems to be working a bit better. Um, anyway, not brilliantly, as I say, by any means, but still a bit better. Like that, for example. <laughs> I need to get to the decent wood in the middle, so let's try and just get this stuff off. completely fails. Arg! Look at this. What is this? Right, get off. Get off. Maybe it's this piece of wood. I doubt it. for a little bit and I'll uh, get back to you in just a sec. I need to move the camera because it's getting dripped on the water that's coming off the top. It's about 25 past 4 now, and I'm hungry, so I've got the fire going. I don't know if I mentioned this, I can't remember, but I'm having sausages and beans for dinner, which I'm very much looking forward to. Um, but because a lot of my wood is really wet on the outside, uh, I think it's going to take a little bit of time for the fire to die down to get some good embers. 
So there's nothing left to do now but play the waiting game. So I'm going to continue to read my book, drink my beer, a very nice proper job, some Hostels Brewery, um, and relax. So I will catch you in a bit when the food's going on. Cheers. Sausages. These have been defrosting all day. Oh, this might make my eyes and nose run. They are still a little bit frozen, but they'll be okay. Let's get these on. Oh, yes. Don't be flame grilled. They are already <laughs> very warm. Oh no! Casualty! Casualty of cooking! Oh, I can't see. Ow! To the ear, sausage. Sacrifice that one. Now we're cooking. Oh yeah, cook sausages, because I am hungry. Nice and burnt, just as they should be when done on a fire. Just get over there. Stay. Stay. Oh yeah. Look at that. Beauty. behind the camera, in front of the camera. I don't even know if you can see me. Probably not with that, blowing my smoke. There we go. Anyway, this is delicious. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. So, to go with dinner, I've got a nice, well, I assume it's nicer than I, yeah? I've got a new beer that I haven't tried. Excuse me sniffing, by the way. It's all this smoke cleaning out my sinuses. So this is uh, a beer by Buxton Brewery. It's called Kingslayer Double IPA. Um, I'll show you the can in a minute because it looks epic. Apparently it's in Buxton. So uh, as I said, Double IPA, it's 8%, so it's quite hefty. A uh, little tagline, we must have bloody noses and cracked crowns. Not sure what that's about. Uh, there isn't a huge amount of there's no description or anything on it, so I guess we'll just crack on. I'll show you the I'll show you the can actually because it's really cool. Look at that. 
You see that? Oh, Kingslayer. Arrgh. Grr. Grr and starch. Ugh. Anyway. Give it the magic tap. Don't mind if I smell anything. Oh, clear my nose. Ooh. Smells very fruity, citrusy. Oh, that's good. That's good. Very kind of uh, synonymous with what you might expect an IPA to be. It's a lot of heft, very, very fruity. Very, very fruity, almost a kind of a, a lychee sort of uh, gooseberry flavour to it. It's really, really good. Yep, big fan. Big fan of that. Kingslayer, Buxton Brewery. I approve. Mm. Just love it when you grill sausages over the fire and the skin gets all crispy. Brilliant. Mm. Oh, so good. So good. So easy. Genius. Temperature's starting to drop. I think it's been around 9 or 10 all day. Starting to feel a little bit colder than that. Um, but the rain hasn't come back. Um, what's the time? The time is... Currently 20 to 6, so I've probably got, what, an hour left maybe of daylight, something like that. So good to get this, uh, good to get the food done first. I was kind of hungry. I was going to wait till later, but couldn't stomach it anymore. I was too hungry. Uh, I'm glad that I did, because this is great. But yeah, so I'm going to eat my dinner, and I'll probably catch up with you after that. Shut up, plane. Ruining the tranquility of my dinner. Seriously, anybody who hasn't had fire grilled sausages or it's a can of baked beans, you are missing out. Food of Kings to go with Kingslayer beer. Irony! were perfectly matched. Well, I think it's fair to say the dinner was a complete success. I am uh, nice and full and I even have a little bit left which I'm saving for a late dinner snack supper thing. Um, but yeah, so I'm very very happy, very very full, very very content. So I'm now just going to relax in front of the fire and uh, continue to read my book for a bit. Beer's still uh, going down very, very well. I still have another one, actually. Still have another one. I'm starting to lose light, so maybe I should tell you about it now. And then I'll tell you what it's like when I open it. Uh, this is a... It's another double IPA. It's called Sure Shot from the Vocation Brewery. Uh, apparently it's a well-travelled double IPA brewed with a trio of outstanding hop varieties. Classic Mo uh, Galaxies. Classic. Outstanding hop varieties, Galaxy, Mosaic, and Citra. I have no idea where I got Classic from. <laughs> oh, seriously. Smoke. Made in collaboration with Sure Shot, uh, a brand new venture by brewing legend Kane, uh, James Campbell. Definitely worth the journey. Okay, maybe it's not called Sure Shot. Oh, apparently it's called 15 Mile Round Trip. I do apologise. The uh, can kind of made me think it was called Sure Shot. The actual name. These tiny little letters across the bottom there. Well, that makes sense. Anyway, um, I look forward to trying that. And I, as always, I shall let you know what it tastes like. But for now, as I said, I'm going to try and stop sniffing. And try and clear my nose. Blimey. 
smoke, man, it's killing me. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to relax, read my book, and uh, I'll get back with you quite soon if uh, anything interesting happening. There's another heron. There's a massive heron behind the camera. There's actually two of them. Just in the in the water that's uh, flooded the field behind the camera. There's loads of different birds. There's loads of gulls and uh, jackdaws and crows and stuff. It's definitely two huge herons, which I guarantee if I get up and turn the camera around to try and film them, they will disappear. All right, let's try. Don't notice me, Heron. Just chill and let me film you. Can let me film you? Can let me film you? No, <sighs> of course not. Of course not. Well, trust me, they're all in that vicinity over there. That's really quite frustrating. <sighs> anyway. Uh, it's starting to rain now as well. It's starting to rain again. Ugh, and there's planes everywhere. I know you can't see me very well right now, but I um, figured it's time that I try my <clears throat> last beer for the evening. So it's now... Coming up to about half eight, something like that. It is well and truly dark, which is very, very nice. Um, I've got this cool new lamp. See this? I found this the other day in uh, in storage in my house. Um, no idea who it belongs to, but uh, it's mine now. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool. So, yeah, very cool for little uh, camping trips like this. But anyway, I'm digressing, I'm digressing. So we're going to try this uh, location and sure shot 15 mile round trip double IPA beer. So this is... how strong are you? 8% uh, as well, so same as the last one. So again, fairly hefty voltage for a beer, but let's try it. Oh, that is good. That is very good. Quite similar to the Kingslayer in that it's quite, um, uh, there's a hint of citrus to it. It's a very, uh, it, it tastes like a very kind of stereotypical sort of new age IPA, I would say. Uh, this one's got a hint of, uh, a hint more of red berries um, as opposed to the Kingslayer, which is more like lighting gooseberry, if I remember correctly, which I'm pretty sure is what I said. Uh, this one has a little bit more of a kind of a raspberry and cherry to it, but not not overpowering. So it's still it's still quite similar, it's still quite similar. Just a, a hint of that kind of red berry fruit, um, but still very very tasty. So uh, oh. yep, I approve. Vocation and sure shot. I approve of your beer. Well done, you. Very very tasty. So yeah, as I say, sun's gone down, nice and dark now, so there's not a huge amount really left to do. Uh, I'm certainly not going to go collecting any more firewood and stuff like that. The fire itself, um, because the wood is, particularly the outside, is kind of wet, it's taking a long time for it to kind of catch light and a long time for it to burn, which is nice in the sense that I get a kind of ambient light throughout the evening, but it, uh, it's not kicking out a huge amount of heat. Which isn't, isn't a, a massive problem, it's not cold by any means. Um, I'm about to put my coat on, as you might be able to see, as you probably, probably can't see actually. But I've had to put my coat on, um, just because I wasn't getting a little bit chilly, but nothing uh, overly drastic. So there's nothing left to do now, but um, enjoy the evening. So, I'm not going to stay up for a huge amount of time to be honest. I don't really when I'm camping by myself. With them, with my friends, you know, we'll stay up to all, all hours of the morning, mucking about and having fun, but when you're on your own, um, I kind of, or when I'm on my own at least anyway, I kind of follow what my body dictates. So if I start to get tired, then, you know, I go to bed and, uh, and wake up early. Uh, so yeah, so thank you um, very much for sticking with me during the day. Uh, I'll say goodnight now. Uh, if something interesting occurs during the night, of course, I will, uh, will let you guys know. 
Uh, but I will say goodnight for now, and I will see you in the morning. Good night, guys. I just remembered I have a sneaky top of single malt scotch whiskey in my little hip flask to enjoy. Cheers, guys. Whiskey is one of my most favourite drinks. It really is. So this is um oh what's it called? Arbalor, I think it's called. Is that right? No, that doesn't sound right. Oh, maybe it is Arbalor. I don't know. Um anyway, it's one that I um haven't tried a huge amount of times. I can picture the bottle in my head, but I can't I can't remember what it's called. I don't think it's Arbalor, I think it's Ar Ardor or something like that. Something similar to Arbalor, but not Arbalor. I'm rambling now. Anyway, it's really good. I really like the um, the kind of the Isle, the big smoky, peaty whiskies. Um, this one isn't quite that. It's not um, it's not a really soft whiskey, but it's not hugely smoky. Although fair being next to this fire it'll probably get so um but either way it's really really nice um and i'm thoroughly enjoying it by the fire so cheers guys oh, oh that's good so it's quarter past ten now and I think it's time for bed. I know I've said goodnight already, um, but I then found my whiskey. <laughs> I remembered that I had whiskey, so uh, I'm actually going to go... <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm actually going to go to bed now, so... Goodnight, guys. I shall uh, I'll see you in the morning. Good morning, guys. How you doing? I, uh, I slept really well, uh, I have to say. Uh, it's about, what time is it now? It's 8 o'clock now. Oh, excuse me. 8 o'clock now. I woke up uh, at about half past four this morning. Uh, and it was still dark. Uh, so I went back to sleep and I woke up again at about six. Uh, and I've just been kind of lying here since then, uh, listening to the birds and listening to the, the raindrops on the top. Um, which has been really nice, but I'm hungry. I'm hungry and I'm thirsty, so I'm going to go in search of breakfast. Um, I didn't actually bring anything to eat for breakfast with me. Uh, I did bring some coffee, but to be honest, I'm, I'm really hungry and I, I don't want to uh, take the time to build the fire up, you know, boil water, make coffee, drink coffee, and then, you know, make the fire pit safe again. Um, I'd rather just go uh, get some food somewhere else uh, and a nice coffee somewhere else, because the stuff I've got that horrible instant uh, rubbish. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to break down camp and I'm going to head off uh, on the search for breakfast. Um, as I said, I slept really well. Uh, I was kept nice and warm. I learned recently actually that the more clothes you wear while in a sleeping bag, the more heat that you lose. Uh, I'd never particularly known that before. So uh, last night I did the opposite. Uh, I slept in just my pants and uh, I was really warm. Uh, so it did make a massive difference, which was very, very cool. Uh, the river has gone down hugely. Um, it didn't rain for most of the night. I think it stopped about nine o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, something like that, fully. And then, yeah, it has kind of rained a little bit this morning, but nothing dramatic in the river. I'll show you the river. Oh. Look at that. Yeah, river's uh, gone right down. So, um, so that's cool as well. So there's nothing left to do. Oh, you can't even see me, can you? Pointing the camera in completely the wrong direction. Well done, <sighs> stupid boy. Uh, but yes, so uh, so I'll leave this video there, guys. Thank you very very much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, make sure you like, comment, 
share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, and I shall see you very, very soon in another Carnival Craft Bushcraft video. Take care, guys.